we have also already talked about analysis. There are a couple of very relevant and very important concepts, alternate optima and flux variable analysis. So I will talk about those concepts. How can we handle alternate optima problem? There are two alternatives. One is two major alternatives, let me say. One is flux variable analysis. The other one is performing a second optimization based on minimal enzyme production. I will cover those uh, subjects now. First, let me define alternate optima. If this is the solution space and this is the objective function to be maximized, this is the direction of the maximality, we know that here is the solution space, right? Because that's the uh, intersection of the solution space with our objective function. So in this case, we have optimal solution in a corner. What if, as in this case, objective function is parallel to one of the edges in the solution space? So, in this case, if you try to take the maximis, maximum value of the objective function, the intersection is not a point, but it is a set of points. So, there are many, many points. So, we have this short line here, and all points in this line will satisfy the objective function. In other words, we don't have a single solution vector to satisfy this because you see this point is also a solution. But just a, another point above it is also a solution. This point, I mean here, is also a solution. They all lie within the objective function, right? So we have multiple vectors, let's say we have x1, x2 values here, different combinations of x1, x2 values will give us the optimum value for the objective function. Those cases are known as degenerate solutions. So optimal solution lie on an edge. We have more than one solution that satisfy our optimization criteria that satisfies our objective function. This is related to this problem of alternate optima. So we have more than one optimum solution with the same optimum value. Remember our graphical solution. All points in this line, objective function line, will have exactly the same value, right? Objective function is something like 2x plus y equals something. So this is the formula corresponding to this line. So all points on this line will satisfy this, right? So this means that we have the uh, x and y combinations that leads to exactly the same optimum value. One other alternative is unbounded solution. If you don't have enough constraints, in this case, for example, if you are trying to maximize the objective function, you can push the objective function line here till infinity, right? Because there is no bound there. So we have an unbounded solution. 
So we need to be sure that we have really uh, pre properly uh, bound the solution space. And we should be aware of this problem of optimal solution lying on an edge. Uh, the problem also known as alternate optima. A visual example on this alternate optima to better uh, demonstrate the related problem. Let's say we have a very simple system. A goes to B via two alternative reactions and B goes to C and D. And we know that A is taken up by this simple cell with a rate of 10 millimole per gram dry weight per hour. And the question is, what is the maximal production of production rate of C in this case? So, if there's 10 units of A coming in, 10 units of B will be formed, and if you want C to be maximum, this 10 units of carbon will go to C, and 0 will go to D, right? So maximum production of C is also 10 millimole per gram dry weight per hour. But do we have a single flux distribution to satisfy this? Let's say our, this is our vector V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. This is our solution vector. We know that V1 is 10. We know that V4 will be 10 and V5 will be 0, right, for the optimum solution. What about V2 and V3? Since these are two alternative reactions, maybe 5 of 10 is going through the V2, and the other 5 is going through the V3. And at the end, we will have 10 units of B formed. But as I said, the rate of the V2 can be 5, the rate of V3 can be 5. Or the rate of V2 can be 10, the rate of V3 can be 0. Or the rate of V3 can be 0 0.1 and the rate of V3 can be 9.9, .9, right? At the end, for all those combinations, we will have the same amount of B formed. But as you see, there are kind of infinite alternatives here for the V2 and V3. They all give us the same optimum value. So for our objective function, we will have the same optimum value, but we will have this alternate optimal problem. There are different flux vectors that exactly satisfy our optimality condition. So, uh, how should we handle this alternate optima? So, we cannot exactly predict the value of V2 and V3 in this case. There is no way to predict it because of all those different possibilities. But we can suggest, we can recommend a range for the fluxes. So, we know that V2 considering that they are irreversible reactions, can have a minimum value of 0, and in this case, V3 will have a value of 10, right? And V2 can have a maximum value of 10, and in this case, V3 will have a value of 0. So, both V2 can change between 0 and 10, and V3 can change between 0 and 10, 
among those optimal solutions. So one way to report fluxes is if there is alternate optimal to predict to, to give possible range for those not fixed, not unique fluxes. V4 is unique, it will always be 10. V5 is unique, it will always be 0. But V2, we should report this range. And for V3, we should report again this range as the possible values of the rate of uh, the corresponding reaction. So alternate optima is different solutions, different solution vectors that satisfy the constraints in your problem, mass balance constraints and uh, reversibility measurement constraints, and they have the same optimal value. 